working with the Ministry of Health and the county governments and significant stakeholders over the last five years. And one of the things that we've been working closely with the Ministry of Health is on the emergency medical care policy, yes. uh, which the Ministry of Health has provided as a strategic plan to strengthen emergency care over the next five years, between yeah. 2020 and 2025. And I think this is a significant milestone in this country where um, the government is actually taking a forefront in uh, providing a plan how we are going to integrate emergency care uh, into the healthcare system mm -hmm. and how we are going to strengthen the emergency care service to the healthcare system. And uh, some of the things work we've been doing with uh, different uh, counties is also mapping out emergency centers across the country to make sure that okay. people actually know where to go. So not every, that's the other part thing that people need to understand is not every facility has the capacity to provide emergency care. And okay. in all honesty, not every healthcare facility should have that capacity. Explain so, that to us for a moment. How come? Because yes. we all think that because you're a doctor or a nurse or a whatever form of medic, you need to be able to give this service. So explain to, to people why not every hospital has the capability of providing emergency medicine. So there are multiple there are multiple components to the emergency care. Yes. So the first part is, of course, you need to have a trained healthcare provider. So now, okay. like surgery, like pediatrics, not every healthcare provider is trained to provide emergency care. Okay. So the assumption that just because you're a healthcare provider, you should be able to save my life, that's a very huge assumption mm. because if every healthcare provider has their their scope of practice and what they are specialized to do and what they can do. So for example, I am an emergency care provider. I cannot provide you with surgery. Even if you showed up and you need surgery, I can't. It's not, it's not anything that I do. So similarly, you cannot expect every healthcare provider to know emergency care. There are components that they should know uh, and every healthcare provider is encouraged to know some of the components of emergency care, but it is unreasonable to expect every single healthcare provider to know everything about emergency care. And this is why it's important first to have, number one is to have the trained healthcare providers. Number two is to have the dedicated emergency care departments in right. every single county mm -hmm. so that people know if I'm having an emergency, I'm not going to the health center. The health center will not be able to take me to theater, mm -hmm. but this, this is the emergency department in this county. That's where I should be going to get my emergency care. And within that emergency department, there are trained healthcare providers, there are the appropriate resources within the emergency department that can save lives. So a lot of facilities, I'll give you an example, as many of our facilities, let's say the healthcare centers, a center, uh, are designed to provide primary healthcare, uh, which is things like immunization, just right. routine follow-up and things like that. So if you show up there with a significant head injury, the health center is beyond, you, are, you have an emergency beyond the capacity of the health center. And yes, sometimes, yes. Uh, you will think that the facility is refusing you care, yeah, but yeah. the reality of which is they do not have the resources, mm -hmm. they do not have the trained healthcare providers, so you are basically at the wrong facility. So one of the things we're really working strongly with the county governments and the Ministry of Health is to define which are the emergency centers, uh, the public emergency centers across the country that then people know if I'm having an emergency, this is where I should go. So okay. this is one of the things that we've been working very hard with. Mm -hmm. um, maybe one more project I can say about the COVID-19 pandemic. We realize there's a big gap in terms of provision of oxygen within emergency care centers mm -hmm. uh, across the country. So as a foundation, we installed oxygen gas manifolds in Alupe, Thika Level 5, Machakos Level 5, and Kajado County Referral Hospital mm -hmm. to increase the capacity of these facilities to provide oxygen to more patients during this pandemic. Okay. Now, uh, I think a, year, a little over a year ago, there's a video that made it uh, made rounds on social media whereby a woman gave birth at the reception. Does that fall under emergency health care and why are they just being mean by not providing her with the health care? Because the person who took the video wanted to expose the fact that there was a gross negligence on the part of the people who are expected to take um, responsibility for that. So as an expert in this um, area, what do you make of such situations? So again, um, the main thing to look at is um, is this facility, for example, set up to be an emergency department, mm. okay? So there are processes and sometimes, yes, I mean, even in the best emergency departments, mothers do deliver in the reception. Uh, for example, if they come in when they're just about to deliver, yeah. then it could happen that they have deliver within the reception. But the other thing about emergency care is 
it should be provided even at that reception. The yes. good thing about uh, emergency care equipment and trained healthcare providers, the care goes to the patient, mm -hmm. not the patient to the care. So yes. if, a, if a, for example, you show up in a proper emergency that has well set up emergency department and you happen to be delivering the, uh, in the waiting area, then the facility should be able to have the resources and the personnel to actually facilitate that delivery within that reception. But this allows you to have, uh, this means your systems must have been well established. And that's the importance of actually establishing good emergency departments where the resources are there, the personnel are trained, and the processes, because they're the process that potentially may have, in case, for example, she had been waiting for too long, uh -huh. there's a process called triage. Triage yes. is the process where, as you get into the hospital, within the first five minutes, the, the facility should have determined, are you having an emergency? The moment you get to the hospital, the priority in any facility is not about cash payment, uh, it's about are you having an emergency? And mm -hmm. if you're having an emergency, then the triage system allows the facility to pr prioritize your care. So yeah. it's not the, the hospital, the emergency department on a first come, first serve mm -hmm. basis, like when you go to the bank. This is where when you get to the hospital, the facility first prioritizes and figures out who is the most sickest of all of you. And yeah. that person is the first person to get care. And then the rest, uh, based on if they're not having emergencies, then they can go through the normal process of making payments, all before they get to see the doctor. But person having an emergency should be identified in a proper emergency department within a few minutes of arrival. Okay. Now let's talk about areas of, of, of concern. We've talked about maternal health care and the coronavirus in Kenya and at, uh, in, uh, in a larger aspect, Africa. What are the other areas of concern that emergency medicine, uh, of course, needs to be more focused and built up? Uh, the first one I will say is road traffic accidents. Okay. Um, I think this weekend on the 15th is the World Day of Remembrance Road Traffic Crash Victims. Um, I would say categorically, even in Kenya, more people have died from road traffic crash accidents since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic wow. than potentially the COVID-19 pandemic itself. We have too many people dying on our roads. And what we have is a sad situation where for every uh, person that dies on our roads in Kenya, we have four people who get injured. Now, for the people who die, that one is a prevention. Uh, prevention is the only thing that would have saved their lives. Mm -hmm. Now, for the people who get injured, these are the ones where the emergency care systems need to be prioritized because we have so many people who actually survive the accident but do not survive uh, get into the hospital, do not survive when they get to the hospital because the emergency care system is not optimized to care for these people. Okay. So as one, we always talk about those who die in no traffic accidents, but those who get injured, could their lives could be saved, they could be saved permanent disability, they could be saved from long-term hospital care right. by the acute provision of emergency care. And this has been proven in very many countries across the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that as a country, we need to really look at in terms of providing post-crash care to road traffic crash victims. And what would it take to make that a reality? The first part, of course, is we need an emergency access number. So we need a single number where if an accident happens, a call is made to this number. So it could be, uh, for example, in COVID times, you actually came up with a 719 number. So mm -hmm. the 719 would be a good number to say, when an accident happens, call 719. And okay. when you call 719, uh, the dispatch center then sends an ambulance that shows up in a timely manner and ambulances have trained emergency care providers. They will actually save your life. So the ambulance shows up and uh, uh, stabilizes the patient on the scene and then transports the patient to the nearest emergency department that will be able to continue the care provided by the ambulance personnel all the way through the emergency department to recovery. So the first part, of course, would be let's get a seven, uh, not a 719, but mm -hmm. a similar number, or yeah. it could be the same number, mm -hmm. to prior, uh, as a call that Kenyans know in case of an emergency call this number, let's develop our public ambulance access, uh, ambulance systems and make sure that they are available and have trained personnel and are well equipped and then let's then designate and make sure all the designated emergency care centers are well uh, resourced in terms of human resources and in terms of equipment okay what about pre-existing conditions such as heart attack i mean high blood pressure diabetes and what have you where do they fall in terms of emergency medicine those actually are now 
coming up, if you actually look at the top 10 causes of death uh, in Kenya currently, one of the uh, two of the causes are heart attacks mm -hmm. and strokes. Now, heart attacks and strokes are as a compli are complications of the diabetes and hypertension that sometimes if it's not well managed, then you end up with a heart attack or a stroke. Yeah. Now, a heart attack and a stroke are conditions that actually are survivable and treated, yeah. but they are need to be treated in a timely manner. Okay. Now, for example, if you take a heart attack, the, if you can get to an emergency center that ha provides heart attack treatment within the first, uh, preferably within the first four hours, but again, it, uh, this can extend up to 12 hours, but the longer you delay, the worse your outcome will be. Yeah. So the moment you have chest pain as a person who's diabetic, hypertension, elderly, you need to be rushing to a heart attack center because your care, uh, your survival is actually on a clock. Mm -hmm. And the more you delay, the higher your chances of dying. Okay. Uh, similarly, for a stroke, uh, especially what we call the ischemic stroke, mm -hmm. we have only four hours to provide you the treatment. Yeah. Okay, so from the moment where you have your stroke symptoms, which could be a weak arm, slurred speech, or difficulty speaking, yeah. from that moment, you have four hours to get to a stroke center. So a center that is able to provide you with the appropriate stroke treatment. And these are the emergency conditions that we see a lot in the emergency department, patients showing up too late, okay. where we actually are not able to provide any care anymore. And you are now suffering permanent disability. And then of course then, and of all death, okay? And many patients also die. So uh, heart attacks and strokes, um, very very common in this country they are the top one of the uh, amongst the top 10 causes of death mm -hmm. and lives can be saved by developing proper emergency care systems specifically for these two conditions any other area of concern that we haven't mentioned i think you've actually captured interestingly <laughs> most of okay. them so you okay. there's maternal mortality yeah. there is trauma there is uh, heart attacks and strokes mm -hmm. i think the big the other one that potentially we look at is what we call sepsis or infections mm -hmm. um sepsis is where you have a severe infection that your whole body becomes um what i'd say infected and yeah. you need uh, significant emergency and critical care to save your life so again, this is also on the top 10. We will see that some of the top 10 causes of death in Kenya is things like pneumonia, mm. diarrhea. So all these uh, conditions, again, also lead to what we call sepsis. And this is, uh, this are, is an uh, is a medical emergency that if not provided care in a timely manner, then will contribute to death. So if you look at the top 10 causes of death, um, a lot of them are amenable to good emergency care systems and even the WHO has looked at several studies and shown that we can reduce uh, mortalities in amongst these conditions by almost 50 percent and the number of disabilities by a third by yeah. just developing robust emergency care systems. Okay. So, something we need to prioritize as a country now when you're looking at africa as a whole it seems you'd have um the foundation would have a it's what work cut out for itself because different nations have different challenges and priorities so how can africa as a whole build up its capacity for emergency medicine and and prioritize it as a something that is needed as opposed to the usual systems that uh, every nation has uh, keeping in mind that every country has its own unique systems and capabilities and priorities. Actually, the interesting part is a lot of African countries are actually now working very hard to develop the emergency care system. Uh -huh. And uh, if you look at countries, for example, like Ghana, Ghana has a fantastic ambulance system okay. that has been developed over the last five years. Uh, Rwanda is also has a very good ambulance system. Uganda uh, has been developing the ambulance systems and has a good public ambulance system. So even our neighboring countries are really prioritizing emergency care because I think we've all realized that yes, there's a healthcare, there's a, our normal healthcare system, but people are dying before they can access the healthcare system or within a few hours of accessing the healthcare system. And these are the people that emergency care can actually save. And mm -hmm. many countries across Africa, and uh, I also, we are part as Emergency Medicine Kenya Foundation, we are part of a larger organization called the African Federation for Emergency Medicine that looks at strengthening emergency care and works with different countries across the continent. And 
a lot of African countries, and which is really a good thing, are now prioritizing emergency care. And even WHO has been working hard with the African Federation of Emergency Medicine to see how they can support different countries of the continent to strengthen their different their emergency care systems to make things better. Yeah, you've sampled various countries across the, the continent. What about the status of East Africa? How are we doing? East Africa, uh, we are, can say, in the development stages. So if you look at Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, uh, they all have started establishing, they have emergency medicine training programs that have been established in the last couple of years. A lot of them are now building the ambulance systems, specifically Uganda, I know, has been doing a lot of work to build its emergency care, their ambulance systems. Uh, countries like Tanzania have been doing a lot of training of healthcare providers mm -hmm. to improve the human resource behind emergency care in the country. Uh, Ethiopia also has been... I think has developed very many programs that are now training emergency care providers okay. to make sure that the human resource is available at the facilities to provide the appropriate emergency care. Okay, and last but not least, the biggest story this this week, I know it might be outside your scope, but it's that vaccine that the whole world is waiting for. What, what's your take on that? And uh, I, would, I would venture to say that that is emergency medicine in a way, because everyone wants a vaccine, every country wants a vaccine. A vaccine. What's your take on that? All right, uh, so I'm not an expert on vaccinology, so yeah. what I'll give you is just my understanding of the vaccine. So the, the COVID-19 vaccine, um, the studies that have come out so far from the manufacturing shows, it has a very good, uh, say almost 90% um, yes, yes. rate of uh, prevention of COVID-19. Um, and though they still have to do more studies uh, specifically to look at um, whether it actually can prevent uh, can treat mm -hmm. patients with COVID-19 or can prevent transmission uh, amongst the elderly and the too young. So it's it's good that we're really working towards uh, the vaccine and hopefully we may see a vaccine come to light uh, soon, though I know it's a long process. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, the, the thing is about vaccines is once many we can get many people vaccinated then the disease burden will definitely come down and of course then that will be a lesser burden on the emergency care systems okay thank you very much for tying it up like that and uh, that has been dr benjamin washira who is the assistant professor of emergency medicine at the aga khan uh, university thank you so much for bringing perspective to the issue of emergency med medicine and if you as you have heard it is your right to get emergency medical care particularly if you fall within the bracket of those conditions that qualify as emergencies. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we shall update you on news making headlines both locally and internationally. Stay tuned to Morning Express.